So, I was not expecting this to be the video that I make when I return to YouTube, but here we are. I'm dead inside, and I want to go back to a week ago to when I had no idea who this person was other than hearing their name being suggested for me to make a video about in my live streams. Today, we are going to be discussing a very infamous online persona known as Chris Chan or Christine Chandler, which we will get into in a moment. And I want to preface this by saying, this is probably one of the darkest and most disturbing topics I've ever covered on my channel. So many of you by now probably understand what has occurred most recently with Chris Chan and her mother. But before we get into that, I am going to create a mini timeline for you with some very crucial moments in the history of Chris Chan, if you will. For those of you who do not know who Chris Chan is and are just as confused as I was a few days ago when first looking into this, buckle up because this is going to be one wild ride. For those of you who do not know, Chris Chan has been a very infamous online persona since, I want to say, almost the beginning of YouTube and forums as we know it. It is extremely important that I mention to you that Chris Chan also is on the autism spectrum. I would like to make it very clear that a lot of terrible things have unfolded over the years involving this person. And that by no means indicates that every single person who has autism is going to be like this. And if you take away anything from this video, it should be that. Autism spectrum disorder is a spectrum. Not everybody is going to deal with it the same way. Some people may have it more severely than others. Some people may be more higher functioning than others. It's not a one size fits all disorder. And it's something that a lot of people will experience very, very differently. Some people you may not even realize have it and other people may display very clear signs that they are struggling socially or in other ways that make it hard for them to adjust to what is considered a normal lifestyle. And when we look at Chris Chan, it is very evident that there have been several different occasions where this has caused them to struggle. So Chris Chan is most known for their comic Sonichu, which is a combination of Pikachu and Sonic the Hedgehog. This has been memed for years and years and years. This is the biggest thing that people know them for. Over the years, there have been a lot of trolls who had not only made fun of the Sonichu comic, but a lot of them had taken things very, very far by taking advantage of Chris Chan's disabilities and using that to do really, really messed up things. For example, one person convinced Chris that they were a girl who was very interested in dating and Chris and this person had what Chris thought was a relationship. So Chris sent this person their Sonichu medallion that they made and this person ended up destroying that and defiling that medallion on camera as a joke. And that just, in my opinion, is just really, really mean. There was another situation where Chris Chan had actually gone on a date with a girl, and this time it was actually a girl who was physically in presence going on a date with Chris. And towards the end of the date, it was all a joke. This girl had another person come out dressed up in a pickle suit and taking her away from Chris Chan because Chris Chan doesn't like pickles. And it was just a huge joke, a huge meme. And it was something that just, in my opinion, is extremely messed up and just cruel to do to somebody who you know has mental disabilities. It's just not like, that. that's just <coughs> fucked up, dude. But just because some people had taken advantage of Chris not being aware socially of certain situations doesn't mean that Chris Chan is completely excused of all of the things that have happened over the years especially pertaining to the Sonichu comic. Because as you see, as the comic went on, things grew more and more concerning. Many years ago, when Chris was still in college, Chris decided to put up a bunch of flyers around the campus in search of a romantic partner. And this was very obviously not allowed for different ethical reasons. And one of the people in charge decided to tell Chris, you have to take these flyers down. And Chris reacted very poorly to that. Chris decided that they were going to put this person in their comics and depict them very negatively, sort of as a villain. This pattern would continue as anybody who wronged Chris Chan would end up making an appearance as a character in their comics as a villain or as somebody who would get beaten up or 
attacked. It would get to the point of severity which even trolls who harassed Christian online would have their characters appear in this comic and their characters would receive very violent death scenes. But this situation gets even worse with one of Chris Chan's only friends. Chris Chan didn't have many friends, but they did have one friend who was a girl and they seemingly had a lot of attraction for. Chris ended up creating a drawing of the two of them engaging in very inappropriate and sexual actions and eventually posted this drawing in a public argument trying to dispute rumors that Chris was gay. The friend ended up finding out about this drawing and was disgusted and Chris responded with, well, I had to take my frustrations out and create this drawing because if I hadn't, I don't know what I would have done, implying that Chris would may have forced themselves onto their friend. That's the implication that I get anyway, and it is something that is deeply disturbing and unfortunately shows and displays a pattern later on. But this is truly, truly horrifying, and it's sad that nobody really did anything about this at the time because maybe it could have stopped things from getting worse. We'll get into that later. At some point after this, Chris Chan's father ended up passing away and the way that Chris would cope with death, not just of their father, but also pets, would be to put them in the Sonichu comic so that they could live on forever in the comic. And in my opinion, that's just really sad, but it also seems to be part of what is Chris's delusions, which we are going to get into in a moment. Chris believed that there was a dimension where any creation that is a cartoon simply exists the way that you and I do, and that they are actually real, they're just in a different dimension, and um, that one day these dimensions were going to merge, and that people who are living human beings in this world's dimension are going to coincide with this other dimension with cartoons and that eventually one day they're all going to live in the same space. And if I understand correctly, this is something that Chris believes to this day, that one day the dimensions are going to merge and they're going to live with all the characters they created in their Sonichu comic. It's just, in my opinion, really sad, but it's also really concerning because this person also genuinely believes that they have another self in this dimension and that this person is, do I remember correctly by saying they were from another planet? They are a female in that dimension and I believe if I remember correctly, that is why they have transitioned into female from male in what they would consider this dimension. This is the part where the story goes from sad to utterly disgusting and disturbing though. And while it is sad that this person has gone through so much trolling while having mental disabilities, it is also important to know that this person is not excused from doing very, very terrible things like we are about to mention now. Chris lives with their elderly mother, Barb. Barb has essentially been decomposing in this house with Chris for years at this point. Barb unfortunately has dementia and it appears to be a very severe case of it to the point where she does not even appear to be lucid in most of her day-to-day -day life or at least in the streams and clips that Chris has shown over the past few years. Barb does not seem to be capable of taking care of herself, and she seems to be very dependent on Chris for survival. Also does not seem to be mentally aware of her own surroundings and what is going on, let alone aware enough to consent to things, like sexually. Now, for legal reasons, I do have to say allegedly, but Chris has allegedly performed sexual acts on her mother, Barb, because they were under the impression that Barb had made the first move onto them romantically and that they wanted a romantic relationship. This was all discussed in a conversation with a person who at this point I do believe is still anonymous. It is unknown if this person was a troll trying to get Chris to admit this or if they were a concerned follower or person involved in some sort of investigation with this, or if they were an actual friend of Chris supporting this. But here are some snippets of that conversation. I will leave the conversation info below. 
I do not want to play all of this on my channel because it is that disgusting, but for context, we will listen to some of it. I didn't even think that. I, I knew that you guys had a good relationship, but I always thought, because uh, I'm not huge on history and, you know, whatever, I just thought that the whole Sancho franchise is very interesting, and that's how I um, got into you when I was younger, right? But I had, I, I didn't have any idea that Barbara was, um, that Barbara and you had that sort of relationship. I never got any of those uh, vibes. But, um, how did you approach her? I'm not sure with care and caution. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was a time approach. So I just gave her comfort to talk with her, and we just crashed out slow and steady, and then I, then I heard her positively, like, her make the first move, and she wanted to do it. And she oh, she did? Really? She made the first move? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh really? Wow, Barbara. <laughs> how, how did you do it, if you don't mind me asking? What was the first move? Uh, uh, I don't remember. Exactly. But that was her first move. My approach was, uh, I forgot exactly what, what terminology I approached. I used, but I gave her the caution. That's good. And that was fun. That's good. And what, how did she respond when you um, when you approached her? What did she say? I don't, I don't remember exactly what she said, but it was kind of, I think she was partially confused at one point, but, but then she came around. I don't know if she was approaching the court approaching the court approaching, and I was certainly with her along the way. Right, so she, so she got into it. How was, did you, how was the first kiss? You kissed her? How did that feel? Have you known this woman for your whole life? How did that feel? Oh yeah, I mean, it was simple. Uh, the, 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 the but yeah, actually, yeah, no right. When did you start having feelings for Barbara? Well, obviously, for, you know, well, for a long time, I mean, I remember you mentioning some time ago about the videos that I had dreams where I had, where things where I had sex with her, obviously. Really? So, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's right. We had this conversation. Oh, Oedipus, that's right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, how, how if you don't mind me asking, I know it's probably personal, you have to answer, but how is the sex? Uh, I'd say, it was satisfactory, it took a while, it took a few tries to... It took a few tries, yeah. She is, she's older. And plus, uh, also, she's very understanding about the thing. I was directly with her. I'm still directly with her. I'm sure that I, yeah, obviously, I'm never gonna propose marriage to her at all because we're already daughter. Yeah, mother and daughter. You know, they say there's no, there's no stronger bond than a mother and daughter. Sorry. That made my stomach do backflips. And even in the text messages, and I'm not going to read all of these text messages out because they disgust me, but I will put some on the screen for context. In these text messages, Chris admits that their mother literally said stop. Now, when this information was first released, a lot of people assumed that Chris could possibly have been convinced to say this by trolls, considering Chris has always been targeted by trolls online and coerced into doing very, very dangerous things at points, things that would harm them physically and their lifestyle. But as this progressed, Chris had admitted this to other people in their personal life, and it just seems more and more apparent that Chris is being honest that this actually happened. Again, this is still allegedly until a complete trial is had over this, but that is where we were at up until yesterday. After this had become public, a lot of people have contacted the authorities over this situation and Chris's mother was taken to the hospital to be examined and to what I assume is to get tested to see if she was raped by Chris. And also, Chris was not allowed to stay at the house that they were living at and they were not allowed any contact with their mother during this time. It was proven though that contact was still made with Chris's mother as Chris had taken $750 from her bank account and put it into their bank account because they were negative $200 and they had only stayed in a motel for two nights. Only a dollar was remaining in that bank account after all of this had happened. This was confirmed by somebody who was in contact with Chris and had access to their bank records through email. Because of this, this means one of two things. One, that Chris had either broken the law and had contact with the mother to get permission to put that money in their bank account, or Chris stole money from her mother. Either way, this resulted in Chris being arrested yesterday and being taken away by a police car. And at this point, that is where everything lies, at least up to my knowledge and research on this information as of August 2nd at 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. From my understanding, I do not 100% know for sure if Chris was arrested due to the breach of contact that they've had with their mother or if they were arrested over charges of forcing themselves 
on their mother who has dementia and obviously cannot consent. There are also laws in Virginia, which is where Chris is from, that make it a felony to have any type of incest with any family member, regardless of their age or their ability to consent. It is illegal. So that is very, very um, interesting in the sense of people don't know where this is going to go, but a lot of people assume that Chris is going to be the one charged in this situation, considering their mother is not even lucid enough to consent to something like this. Ultimately, I'm very glad that Chris's mother was taken out of their care because clearly, unfortunately, as sad as it sounds, Chris doesn't seem to be mentally well enough to take care of their mother, considering all the delusions they have and considering their own issues going on. But it's very, very, very obvious that their mother was in extreme danger considering all of this that had happened. This is the most disgusting thing I've heard in a very, very long time. And it's probably the most reprehensible thing we have covered on this channel in a very long time, if not ever. And I just... It, listen, it's very understandable that Chris has dealt with a lot mentally and does not function or socialize properly because of their conditions. But that is no excuse for what happened to their mother. It does not make what happened to their mother okay. It does not make it okay for Chris to be forcing themselves onto their mother. That's disgusting. That is reprehensible. That is wrong. This person doesn't understand that it's wrong, clearly, but that doesn't make it any less wrong. Just because somebody thinks they're right in doing something and thinks that this is okay, and just because somebody may be impaired in certain ways, such as this one being socially, that does not make this situation okay at all. Absolutely not. And I also want to make it very, very well known that most people who have the same conditions that Chris had are not going to do this. And I think that's important to say as well, because this just paints an entire group of people in such a shitty and negative light. And that should not be the case. It should not just be blamed on Chris's autism. This is a situation that despite any type of condition Chris had, there is no excuse for this happening. It's, it's very, very sad and it's very, very disturbing. And this is something that makes me physically sick to my stomach talking about and listening to. This should never have happened. In this case, I just hope that Chris's mother is okay now and is in the proper care that she deserves to be in and that Chris is sent somewhere to get the help that they deserve to because I truly, truly believe that Chris needs lots and lots of help and I hope they receive that. So with that being said, thank you so much. If you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I am so sorry that this is the video I am coming back with. Uh, I understand that this is a very, very harsh and rough topic to talk about. And um, this being my first video back is a lot, but I felt very, very compelled to discuss this today. I do have a few announcements. So if you didn't notice, I took a short break in July and also, hit a breaking point to where I didn't even know if I wanted to continue making this type of content anymore. A lot of this type of stuff had been weighing heavy on me for months and months, but it ended up building up to a breaking point and I ended up hitting that breaking point. So I just needed to take a little step back for a little bit and refresh and recharge. And that's exactly what I did. And I feel a lot better now and I feel good enough to continue talking about topics like this. And I will be breaking this type of stuff up with more positive content and content that makes me happy. I've decided that I think I may do that in the form of live stream maybe twice a month just talking about things that I want to talk about anime video games playing video games stuff like that I think it'll be a lot more beneficial for me and it's very easy and digestible content for you and very easy content for me to create uh, to break things up and it's fun and interactive so let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below I wanted to let you know I am back and I am here to create videos like this on a more scheduled basis and um yeah I have a lot coming this month a lot of different topics and uh I hope you're ready for that. With that being said, thank you so much to everybody who made it all the way to the end of this video. Thank you so much to everybody who has been supporting me over on Patreon, especially Louis, Miss Denisha, Anthony Tressout, and Michelle. You guys are fantastic. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And with that being said, I will see you later.